We continue to celebrate the life of the legendary Dennis Lampley. A visitation for the former Trinity football coach will be held Friday from 2 to 7 p.m. at Pearson's on Breckenridge Lane. His funeral Saturday at 10 a.m. at Trinity's Steinhauser Gym. Two people who felt his impact very closely, his son Brad and grandson Jackson. Guys, first of all, we are so sorry for your loss. All of our thoughts here at WDRB are, are with your family. And I got to tell you, it does not take long to figure out what kind of impact Dennis Lampley left on this community, but I want it from your vantage points. How would you describe the mark that Dennis left on your family and this community as a whole? It's, it's funny, Tyler, you know, we started out the week and you, you know they're gonna talk a lot about the wins and the, the winning sure. streak and the championships and so forth, but what's really happened as the week has gone on has been just to talk about his impact and his influence on so many lives at Trinity and people that have come out of the woodwork that even didn't play football and said, this is, he's helped shape me into who I am today. And as a family, that is unbelievably gratifying. You kind of think it a little bit from a, from a, a son standpoint, sure. but to hear it from others, uh, it's, and, and the neat thing is, is that my, my children, especially Jackson, who has known him as Poppy all these years, <laughs> the grandfather, <laughs> right. but now he's able to kind of see how he was as a coach and the lives he influenced. That's pretty special. Jackson, what, what has it been like for you to hear those stories and see some of that old footage that, that we got about <laughs> the archives too? You know, unfortunately, I didn't have the uh, luxury of actually getting to see him as a coach. Um, growing up for me, he was the athletic director at Trinity. And um, every time I get to walk around with him, you know, whether that is, you know, on game day, hanging out with uh, the Dimlings, you know, yeah. at, at, and, um, you know, just getting to see everybody else at, at Trinity and just how much they loved him just has really been special to me. And, and he was also just, you know, the best grandfather in the world. and. Yeah, really, you would have had no idea as a little kid that he was some legendary coach. Unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't really get to learn about it till I uh, gave a speech for him um, at his uh, Trinity Hall of Fame induction. So, well, well, while we're on the topic of his accomplishments on the field, five state titles, that 50 game winning streak, which is I know it's a Kentucky state record, but find me many schools in this entire country who won 50 straight games at any point. For those who maybe just didn't get to see him work up close or behind the scenes, what made him such a great coach? And those Trinity teams that were so dominant, what made him yeah. so good? I think it was the, uh, it was first of all, the, the, the scheme, the X's and O's, and sure. just, you know, he was always, it, it, was, it was a chess match, and he was always a few moves ahead, it always felt like. He could see a play develop. He'd go to my, my, my Tennessee games when I was there, and he'd sit in the stands with my, my then girlfriend, now wife, and he would always predict what play we were going to run or the other team was going to run. It was unbelievable. <laughs> But yeah, it was like that. And then the other thing was you had 120 players, it, it, irrespective of whatever year it was, fully committed to thinking this is the most important thing in the world. And if you get a high school kid that motivated and, and make, it, make them believe that you know, this is the most important thing I got going on right now, that's pretty special and you're gonna get good results. And that just speaks to the motivation of not only him, but the entire coaching staff that they had for all those years. And I think the, those approaches that he took as a coach clearly were passed down to so many and one of those is Jeff Brom yeah. somebody you guys have a close relationship with him we spoke to Jeff about the impact that coach Lampley had on him and he's been very vocal about this from the start mm -hmm. that your father had as big of an impact on him as any coach across college NFL high school <clears throat> when you hear the words he has for the impact your father had on him how does that make you two feel for me, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's, it's so humbling to see, you know, you think about the, the coaches that he, he played for, you know, Schellenberger, Shanahan, and all these NFL legends, and to hear him say that Dennis Lampley was the most impactful mentor I ever had. There's not a game that goes by that I don't think about what would Dennis Lampley do in this situation. That's still something that I have a hard time processing, and it's just so, uh, I think about it in my, in, in, in my professional career now. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about that. But yet to hear somebody like Jeff Brom, that's in my opinion, one of the top coaches in the sport, regardless of level, uh, to hear somebody like that say that about your father, it's pretty humbling. No, I mean, I completely agree. Um, coach Brom's just such a great coach. I mean, unfortunately he beat me in a bowl game a few years ago. So uh, <laughs> when, when he was at Purdue, but uh, no, I mean, just to, just to get to hear that from somebody who's really at the top of their field. And, you know, I'd love to go into coaching one day and hear how much of an inspiration my grandfather is to him is really special. And for you, I have to share this. Rick Bozich wrote about it so beautifully that if you go back to Jeff Brom's introductory news conference, yeah. uh, Dennis Lampley's there and he's right there, front row, front and center. And you have some great context as to how that happened. And for reference, 
uh, Mr. Lampley was battling Alzheimer's, but please explain. Yeah, he, my mom called me uh, the day before the press conference. Of course, we were so excited that Jeff was coming home, right? I mean, it was just, we've been waiting for it for years. And then uh, mom called me and she said, I need you in Louisville tomorrow. And I'm like, I'm busy. I've got all these meetings. And why do you, she said, Jeff is, is, is wanting your dad at the press conference and he's not taking no for an answer. And, you know, Jeff was, I mean, dad was not in great shape at the point, but yet that was a big moment. And of course, I drove up there and, and we got him at the press conference and, and Jeff had him and on the front row. And uh, that's just an emotional day. And, you know, like I said, dad, dad was not exactly 100% at the time. He was still, yeah. he was battling it pretty well. But yet the next day he got up and he looked at mom and he said, that is amazing what Jeff did for me yesterday. And that was during the, you know, in, in the journey that of, of his suffering with Alzheimer's that he usually didn't really remember what happened the day before. Yeah. That stuck with him. And then, you know, again, every time he would watch a UofL game, dad would, he'd see Jeff on the sideline, something would spark, something would flash, and he would know, you know, that's my guy. And uh, for anybody that's got a loved one that has suffered with Alzheimer's, you know, you cherish moments like that when, the, when the, you kind of see the flash again. Well, it is very clear that Dennis Lampley sparked the flash that not only pushed Jeff Braun, but so many others, countless others, to their various career paths uh, over the courses of his life and their lives as well. Thank you guys Thank you so both. much yes, for sir. your time. Thank you. Thank and you. once again, all of our thoughts are with you guys as you navigate this grieving process. Once again, the great Dennis Lampley, 80 years old.